How's it going? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. Getting a little bit started early this uh, evening. I wanted to um, kind of start with the fact that it looks like our standard of living is collapsing and it's collapsing rapidly. I have been planning for this for a long time. These boom bust cycles happen all the time. How bad is this going to be? Um, I'm still hearing rumblings that we could see a 30% reduction in our standard of living in a very, very short amount of time. And some of the numbers are already starting to come in that uh, looks like this is happening right now, right at this point. Now, if you think about this, this would be almost like getting demoted at work. All of a sudden, they call you in and say, whether right, wrong, or indifferent, whether you screwed up or not, sometimes there's different reasons why this is going to happen. It may be it's a downsizing type thing that's happening in the company, and uh, they just might say, well, guess what? We're just going to pay you 30% less. It may be that you screwed up. Like if you're in the military and you got demoted, dropped down a couple ranks and said, okay, you're going to get 30% less. It could be that your currency in the country that you're living in is being debased and you're going to take a 30% haircut. Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm seeing some things right now that really are starting to be disconcerting. Jim Rector is in the house. Um, so I'm going to go over some numbers that, uh, are starting to come in. <clears throat> and uh, one of the first things I found was an article that talked about, uh, and again, it shows the government doctoring the numbers. So let me, I'm going to flip over. You won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm going to be pulling up uh, a report that I just found. And this is uh, understatement of housing inflation. So the there's this uh, federal housing finance agency uh, says that uh, rent has increased 11.4%, but the BLS, which is Bureau of Labor Statistics, says, no, it's only up 2%. And guess what they use for the CPI index? So they're going to say, no, it's only up 2%. So that particular thing right now, there's this huge disparity of uh, nine percentage points that uh, is not going to get factored into uh, like Social Security and other people's benefits that might factor. And so that one is quite interesting. Another one that I found, and we talked about this last week, lumber prices. Um, this one company's reporting that, you know, they're selling houses and they do it. They went back and looked at like in October, this uh, lumber pack for a particular basic house was, and it might've been a fairly small house, it sounds like, but $18,000. That same house uh, was $30,000 in January. So October to January, it uh, almost doubled. And then today it's $62,000. So it, absolutely doubled from uh, January to then. But think about it. It went up three times from October to today. Some of these numbers are getting astronomical. So uh, we, have to, we have to sit here and be very concerned when you see this. And I know all of you ha have seen the gas prices as well. Although I would argue this is kind of normal. We will see them kind of suppress gasoline prices almost before every election. I probably need to go find a chart and and pull that up, but I've seen it over and over again. Every four years, we just have short memories. We forget that they bring the gas prices down, get it stabilized, and after the election, it just like jumps way up. So don't be surprised if there's a major, sh couple major shocks that really jumped us up and uh, you're going to see something uh, amazing that uh, happens to the economy when it's happened. Everything runs off of oil and gasoline. So everything's built from oil and gasoline. You think about all the plastics and pesticides and uh, everything else. So this is going to be amazing. <clears throat> so uh, anyways, I'm, uh, I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, we just did 1.9 trillion and you're going to see a stimulus check 
flowing in to your account probably over the next week or two. They're getting faster and faster at this. And uh, I think we talked about the fact that you should probably delay doing your taxes until you get this because they've tightened up the uh, income requirements to where it starts paring down the uh, stimulus checks. If you're you and your spouse or you by yourself, you know, make too much money, uh, you might not actually get a stimulus, even though you got it in the past. So that is a factor too. But uh, so not only that 1.9 trillion, and they haven't even spent the other money that was already released. I still haven't shown you that video. And then now they're talking about a two trillion dollar infrastructure. Uh, spending bill. Uh, since they control both houses, the Democrats are probably going to push that through. And uh, good God of mine, we think of the money. Um, we talked about this probably six months ago that I felt, and some of the other people that I've been watching were saying, look, this, this spending was just a ripple in a pond initially, and we're going to see a tidal wave of spending. And this is going to just absolutely trash our currency. And we're starting to see some evidence of this. So unfortunately, when you get gasoline going up and you see the material costs going up, uh, there's going to be a problem uh, where people won't be able to pay, you know, to build these houses and stuff. Now, the super low interest rates uh, that they're probably just looking at what the mortgage is going to be. And, you know, if it, your house costs an extra twenty four thousand dollars because, you know, lumber costs. Maybe that's not quite such a big deal, but uh, when you add gasoline and everything else, I got a feeling this stuff's all all going to be ramping up in price big time. And you know, my thirty percent uh, loss of purchasing power, I could be way off on that. I'm hoping it's just that minimal, but that's going to be catastrophic to most people. Like I said, if you think about it, if all of a sudden I'm gonna I'm gonna just put a number out there. Let's. You know, what do most people make? Let's say if I pick a number, $60,000, what if you're only going to bring 40,000 home this year? Can you pay all your bills? Uh, it's going to be tough, folks. It's going to be tough because essentially your purchasing power, I mean, you might be making the same amount of money, but what's happened is the purchasing power has been lost. So your pay really needs to go up 30% to keep even, and nobody gets a 30% pay raise. All right, so let me read some comments here. And uh, so I said uh, Jim Richter already. We got Para Building, Jay Ward, Dave Davies, uh, and Alvin Cabrera. So Jim Richter was talking about considering selling a a duplex uh, could do a 1031 transfer 10 years or cash flow in a new property. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if I would be buying any properties at this time, but uh, actually getting uh, owner financing is not a bad idea. I've got one property that somebody in the future may end up, uh, you know, I might owner finance that one, but we'll see. Uh, so Alvin says he did not get past the, uh, the 600 and will not get this new one. Apparently he makes too much. Is this the 08 bubble all over again? Apparently we didn't learn our lesson last time. Um, look, it's boom bust, right? Um, sometimes, and there's magic points that things kind of collapsed. Um, Oil, like when it hits, I'd have to go back and look, 100 to $140 or something. Like fishing boats don't leave the docks, folks. I saw that in Florida. They just said, you know, the fish prices weren't going up fast enough for them to make it profitable to go offshore and catch all the fish and bring them back in. And so they didn't leave the docks. And so what happens is uh, demand starts collapsing. People don't go traveling on trips when gasoline, pick a number, $5 a gallon or something. They stay home. So I don't know, you know, it, it does kind of suppress the economy. Alvin says he's going to sell his car and buy uh, a shipper one. I don't know. Do you mean a cheaper one? <laughs> Albert J, 1.9 trillion seconds is equal to 60,208 plus years. 
That's that's true. So last year in Lebanon, just like in Greece, and these are lessons, folks, that don't be surprised if this uh, wouldn't happen here. Uh, the banks limited withdrawals to $1,000 per month. People are still expected to pay for everything out of that over there. Cliff High, I don't, I don't follow that guy. That's that's like goofball stuff to me. I'm sorry. Ice Age and silver will surpass gold. Um, so I did, uh, I did bring an article up, and I was going to discuss this. And the silver folks hate it when I do this, but uh, somebody had written an article that said uh, arithmetic to two hundred dollars silver, and they keep talking about that. Uh, in 1980, you know, silver made it all the way to $50 an ounce. And, you know, gold has continued up from the 850 since that time, but silver just is still languishing. But people want to forget there's a reason why silver is only $50. It, it, it's not necessarily that it's suppressed. We, we know that there's a type of manipulation that occurs. Even the miners themselves do this. They, they kind of uh, hedge their production, they hedge their gasoline prices, they hedge as many things as they can. Uh, but you have to remember that things have changed a lot in that silver is primarily a byproduct now of other mining and they are able to get silver considerably cheaper than what it takes to get gold out of the ground because it's kind of a surface mining only. So um, I will say that uh, that's the biggest reason why silver is not going anywhere because it's actually kind of gotten out of the ground free and it's pretty dang plentiful. Now, if all of it, and <clears throat> I'm also going to remind you, we have gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of people that have stacked a bunch of silver. And when the price gets to a certain point, those people are going to unload it. There's a bunch of professional folks that want to understand how silver behaves and that I've shown you the charts. It always, you know, when it reaches that point and people start unloading, it, it collapses and you don't get a second chance. You keep thinking it's going to pop back up, but it just doesn't. And so um, all this silver that's sitting on the side, that's uh, tied up in good delivery bars, you know, for, these uh, ETFs, and I mean, there's, I forget what the number is off the top of my head. I keep doing that analysis. I go pull it down, tell you how many ounces there are. And I even went and estimated, you know, how many people have in their IRAs and everything else. And all of this stuff will come flooding back into the market. And it's it happens very quickly. That peak is a vertical drop. It's a vertical up and a vertical drop, and it's an impossible play. So, you have to really make sure that uh, you understand how to play that because it's it's almost an impossible trade. So did you hear about the gold mountain discovery in Congo? Nope, I haven't heard about a gold mountain. In the future, it's running out. No, silver is not running out. I've even done that analysis. I went and looked at the... Um, reports from the, I forget who's the uh, government entity that does all this analysis and they have all kinds of words in there and said, look, we have, we recognize the fact that even like oil, that we were supposed to run out of oil by like 1990 and we didn't, you know, we keep finding more and more resources and now we actually have more reserves than we even had back then. So the same thing happens with these precious metals. Uh, and I've read a lot of these mining reports where they, you know, do these initial assessments and they say they've got so many reserves. And then after they've mined for 10 years, they do uh, more assessments and find out they even have more reserves than when they started. So you have to realize that uh, a lot of these things that we've been told is really, unfortunately, uh, from the metal dealers, they're kind of twisting reality and you have to do your own research. Do I think that manipulation might be part of the silver price? Um, I don't know. You know, you think about uh, price is 
still a large part of what they call supply and demand. Um, I will tell you that the manufactured silver, I did go look at. In fact, I'll bring some of that up right now. I did look at the premiums. So remember, manufactured silver and gold and platinum, which are the coins, bars, and uh, rounds and stuff, those are a small percentage of the overall production that's uh, made. So right now, I was looking at premiums for gold, and I'm going to say they're, uh, let's say, roughly 10%. You can find some slightly lower, but you may not have it in stock. You may have to wait for delivery. When I look at uh, platinum, I'm doing this live, so I got to go find this stuff here, and I'm trying to find random year. All this is random year stuff. Platinum is about uh, 20, actually 20 to 28 percent premiums, and it's uh, sitting at uh, dang like 1,500 an ounce right now. Let's look at silver. Silver was actually pretty astronomical. I looked at that a little bit earlier here. Random year. So silver premiums are 35 to 37 percent, and uh, they're around 35 bucks. And this is all silver eagles here, 35 to 36 bucks. That is a lot of moolah, folks. Yeah, the government's here to help. Chung Choi is here. Dino D. Uh, there seems to be a divergence between physical and paper price. It would seem that we already have silver in the 30 price, the $30 price range. Well, you got to, again, you got to remember a good delivery bar is off the top of my head, a thousand ounces, I think. And the good delivery bar prices are really close to the, uh, spot price. But remember, they don't have a lot of work to do when they do a good delivery bar because it's just a poured ingot and it's just stamped with the weight. Where when you do these uh, eagles and everything, they have to have the, uh, I'm not gonna remember the name of it. What do they call the, you have to start with the blanks or something first and uh, then they have to be, you know, basically stamped and then inspected and uh, then they gotta be packaged and delivered where the good, good delivery bars, planch it, okay, thank you. The good delivery bars, uh, there's really not that much to it, and that's why those are primarily used in the industrial realm. But if you want to get silver closer to, you know, the spot price, that's what you do. You go buy a thousand ounces, and uh, you know, it's kind of probably going to spend uh, thirty thousand dollars or something, but you're not going to have huge markups. So I don't know that there's really that much difference between the physical and paper price. The difference is when you're looking at the um, SLV, uh, you're looking at good delivery bars there versus, you know, eagles, right? They're not, they're not stocking up eagles, they're stocking up good delivery bars. So it's, it's I think, again, this is a misnomer from these, um, unfortunately, metal dealers. They're trying to tell you uh, to make you think that there's a break between paper when in fact it's not, it's industrial silver versus manufactured silver, which again, I consider manufactured silver, the Eagles, you know, the, the smaller bars and rounds, the pretty stuff, um, call it more the collectible things uh, where the good delivery bars are the industrial. And that's what you're actually investing in when you're doing the ETFs, you're not investing in uh, the pretty stuff. Well, I would, uh, so Lawrence Franklin, I would never say never again, because I'm telling you right now, the, the doggone stuff, silver especially, you know, it'll jump up to 50 and collapse all the way back down to pick a number, 12 or something. So I would never, never say never. Yeah, so... Uh, so I've always kind of suggested that or kind of told you what I did. And I, I, uh, since 2018, I suggested that you should do 70% gold, 10% platinum and 20% silver. Last March when the uh, price collapsed significantly for 
the physicals, uh, I kind of wish I'd have really loaded up on the platinum at that time because that was a deal of the century. <clears throat> and it's really, uh, platinum has really been the uh, a really fantastic play, obviously, since versus gold. But gold is, you got to think about it, gold is like your life preserver. This uh, silver is kind of a major speculation, but I consider platinum still kind of like uh, it's going to, it's, it's likely going to surpass gold substantially. Yeah, the miners and dollars were uh, dollar were both up on Friday, and uh, gold is holding up very nicely. Yeah, silver is very volatile. You guys, uh, man, it it's hard to sleep with silver. But if you do a portfolio, and I kind of do this scientifically, I look at the volatility of the metals. And, you know, the first rule of investing is to not lose money. So I'm trying to, one, not lose money, but I'm trying to speculate a little bit. So that's why you build your pyramid, remember? You build your base with the thing that is the lower volatility, but still has, you know, good upside potential. And then you start putting the more speculative things, you know, on top of that. So that way you end up uh, being safer. Now, I wanted to talk about, you know, we, we've all heard the saying that uh, has been touted, um, if you don't own it, I mean, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, right? That's, I think it's a, I think that's a good rule of thumb. And um, because of what's happening, we're, we're starting to see some hints of possibly some uh, substantial inflation. And uh, it, it might be worthwhile I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm saying you might want to consider if you're holding some things in an IRA to go ahead and take some distributions to, again, have it in your hand where you really do own it. I don't know. It's something that I think we should talk about as a community. Um, because, Or if you have the means to buy some outside the IRA. Uh, but there's a possibility that you're going to really need this. I will tell you that uh, I had kind of called around a month or so ago. I never did a show on this, but I want to get some people on the phone. But when we're in the middle of all this COVID mess, I called, uh, remember, I talked about depositories before. And then there's a, a type of company that's uh, just below a depository, but it's a secure vault area that they had in Atlanta. And I was I called them specifically to say, what are you guys doing about, uh, you know, COVID? And they said, well, actually our facility is closed. I said, well, what does that mean? If, if I've got important paperwork there, I can't get in there and get it. He says, that's right. Uh, there's nobody in or out because these are not uh, things where they have access to your vault. It's only you, but the building was closed. It was locked down. And if you had precious metals, if you had uh, important paperwork, if you had, I don't know, priceless artifacts of some kind. It was unavailable. So those kind of things concern me because you don't know what's coming. They're throwing some stuff at us that really makes it look like you should really, you know, do some of the things that I'm doing. Like I said, I've, I've not had any food insecurity issues. I've got... Uh, I mean, I'm still got a bunch of eggs coming in. I've I still got some full freezers. I'm about ready to grow some more chicks and and uh, get some meat chickens and you know got my garden. I was I planted potatoes the other day. Um, I'm about ready to plant some uh, sweet potatoes. So I just did red potatoes. I'm uh, starting some seeds here in the next uh, week or so. So um, I'm still moving out, folks. I'm not slowing down, but I want you to start thinking about, you know, bringing stuff closer to home so that you are less affected by things that are out of our control. I mean, we've talked about bank holidays, right? We haven't had one yet, but I told you a story about uh, one of the banks and we had an Another experience, one of my friends had another experience where uh, this bank is closing branches now. Before, they were trying to make a deposit to pay bills, and 
they had to drive all the way to another town to find a branch because it was like as they were going from one to the other, they were on the phone with someone and they were saying, well, you know, drive over here. It was like 10 minutes away. And by the time we got there, oh, never mind. That thing just went down like the tellers were or the uh, ATMs were going down. So we decided to drive like 10 miles away and uh, kind of get ahead of whatever was happening. Um, a similar thing was happening the other day. And I think that's another reason for these stimulus things, because some of these banks are right on the edge of failing, folks. And there may be a day that you go in and try to get your money and it's not there. What are you going to do? Or it's, you're, they're not going to let you get it out. So you better have some cash on hand. You better have, you know, substantial food stockpiles. You may better have a whole bunch of uh, things to kind of get you through a tough time here. All right. So let me see. I got to catch up on some of these comments. Everybody's commenting like crazy. Thank you for the comments. What was your portfolio like before 2018? So as Jay Ward's asking this. So let me tell you, starting in 2012, um, there were two things happening. One, I was moving towards retirement. And so I was, I was trying to move towards uh, more uh, dividend rental income because in retirement, it's taxed at a much lower rate. And actually, state income tax is exempt uh, once you reach, at least in Georgia, it's 62. But a lot of the other states are doing the same thing because they didn't like that, you know, the retirees were leaving and taking their money with them. So when you're moving towards retirement and we had the real estate collapse and everything. So I started moving to tangible assets. So in 2012, I started doing a major rotation for more than one reason. And then uh, by 2018, I felt there was a major bottom in the precious metals. And that was a time to kind of pile in as well as miners. So that's all I've been talking about since that time, but it's a small percentage of my portfolio. Let's see, 50 watching and only 10 thumbs up. Well, we're up to 16 now. Thanks for pointing that out, DW. We need some thumbs up here. I've been talking for 30 minutes already. It's hard to believe. Have I heard about these non-fungible non tokens? Uh, nope, don't think I have. Rob Bustler, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of the world. Well, thank you. Albert saying, anyone starting to get the feeling the universe is out to get us? Yes, especially I foreshadowed, I hate to say it, I foreshadowed a lot of this stuff well in advance, and we haven't even got hit with the really bad stuff yet, and that's when we start getting very recurring cold. That's going to be really crappy when that happens. You still got a few years to kind of enjoy life and get as much out of it as you can before we get to grueling times. I've been working on security a lot lately around the property. Let's see. You ever thought about the possibly eminent domain and the government trying to seize your assets? Um, I actually believe that your IRAs, 401ks, bank accounts, those kind of things are the, the things the government will go after first because all they have to do is flip a switch. They know exactly what you have, folks. Remember, it's all reported to the IRS, all your transactions, everything. And uh, this happened in Greece. Remember the banks? They went ahead and just took a haircut right off the top of the accounts. They said, if you got 100K, we're going to take 10K. Thank you very much. So uh, think about that. Should you only buy U.S. Mint coins compared to other countries' premiums are highest? So I have always recommended that you buy the sovereign coins of the country that you live because they're the most recognizable coins. And uh, even though you pay a, a higher premium, there's a reason for it. It's the most trusted. But two, when you turn them in, you actually get a higher premium than like the rounds. So I've done calculate. I haven't done that recently, but I did it many times where I went and looked at the, you know, if you bought and sold between rounds, bars, and uh, let's say eagles here. I mean, here in the U S so I'll use eagles as the sovereign coins. You actually came out ahead with the eagles with bars being, you know, almost even with eagles, but the rounds uh, 
did not have the same trust value, so they didn't have the same uh, profit at the end. So that's my answer. So I've kind of stuck with the Eagles. What percentage of the population is aware uh, aware of where the world is financially? Um, I'd say a very small percentage. Most people have no clue. They don't even know what fiat currency is versus money. So uh, that's been uh, bred out of the citizenry across the world. So it's going to be a very rude awakening. ODMMC is in the house. Have I ever invested in ag agriculture? I actually invested in my own agriculture, and I'm actually helping a friend develop a multi-acre plot um, that we're going to uh, try to improve this year. Um, we're going to try. He actually did like an open field, but it wasn't designed very well, and he had a lot of flooding. So we're going to try to do some uh, maybe uh, trying to think, what do they call it when you like hill it up? So we're going to like hill it up in areas and so that the plants don't get flooded out. But we also may try to build some substantial raised beds. He also has the framework for doing a uh, high tunnel. So I don't know if we'll get the high tunnel done this year, but we're going to try to do some improved hilling or raised beds uh, this year. So uh, true about banks in Europe, too, in Ireland, bank this is Dave Davis. Bank, Bank of uh, Ireland is closing 103 branches countrywide, mainly in rural areas, and the two big banks in Spain have merged. We've been going through this uh, merging cycle for 30 years in uh, the United States, and so we've got, they basically have all been funneling us into these large, large banks, and they've been starving the smaller ones out. Yeah, I saw this thing about Chicago's trying to give reparations. That's hilarious. Um, if I buy it from a local corn store, the government doesn't know what I have, or am I wrong? Okay, so that's another good uh, video that I should bring up again. I've done this uh, several times, but it's good to do it almost quarterly because we get a lot of new members. But think about... <coughs> There's reporting requirements for buying and selling, and especially what you buy and sell by how much. But that's one of the re another big reason why I buy the sovereign coins because there's no reporting requirements uh, for the dealers to the IRS, no matter the quantity buying and selling. It's on the honor system for you to report to the IRS your capital gains. But there's a lot of states. Um, that are trying to, you know, push to you know, make sure that money doesn't have, you know, taxes. And the, there's been a couple uh, bills going through Congress that I haven't seen that cleared out yet. But they, they want to eliminate the capital gains tax on precious metals. So look, the whole idea, Lawrence is uh, Franklin is asking, if they know everything we have, how safe do you think miners and other stocks are? So the whole idea is not to put all your eggs in one basket. The reason why I'm doing miners more than anything is because in the 1930s, that was the safe play when they started uh, recalling precious metals and stuff and that uh, uh, the miners made just insane profits and insane dividends and I can't imagine that they, first off, I've told you before, they will screw the um, individual. They will never screw the companies because the companies really pay for influence with the congressmen and senators and everything and uh, governors and mayors and all this stuff. So they'll never screw with the miners. And I seriously doubt that... Uh, they're just, they're really going to be looking at your bank accounts and who knows what else, but uh, I, I have no idea what they're going to do. Right now, it looks like they're just debasing the currency and they're trying to hide it until everything kind of gets too screwed up. 
do we think they will reprice gold? I don't think it's going to be the U.S. that's going to do it. I think it's going to be China and Russia that's going to actually reprice it. Remember, they have the Shanghai fix. And right now they're both kind of tracking, you know, the Shanghai fix and COMEX. But that's everybody keeps talking about paper versus physical breaking. But what's going to happen is I think uh, China's just going to say, you know, I think we're going to pay more for gold now. And when they do that, people will might hit their threshold and start selling to China. All the gold starts moving to China. And so the U.S. is going to potentially have to reprice so that it doesn't get stripped out of the country. So th that's kind of the way it's going to work. Nobody really knows. Remember, we are not behind the curtain to know, you know, what the plan is, but it sure looks like they're doing everything they can to speed up the destruction of the currency. <coughs> right now they're going to, uh, they're going to have a printing party until it doesn't work. Well, Jim Rickards has actually thrown out numbers as high as uh, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for gold. So it just depends what percentage of the dollar they're going to back with gold. It depends: is it forty percent? Is it fifty percent? Is it sixty percent? That's what uh, would determine. And we also don't know how much more money they're going to print before uh, they would have to, you know, tie it directly to gold. So. This is a kind of an impossible thing to speculate what the gold price could be because we don't know how many more trillions or, you know, what's the next thing we're going to go to after trillions? Are we going to actually get into the next thing in the next year? Quintillions, uh, quadrillions. Quadrillions, yeah. I'm, uh, I still am thinking this whole COVID thing, you know, where we had ships sitting off the ports, they couldn't deliver. I think it was more the, they had, the U.S. had to go negotiate their debt with these other countries to be able to take delivery of the products and pay for the products. So that's really kind of what was happening. So we must have got some more loans to be able to do this. And so they're uh, spending their, you know, maybe they upped the balance on the credit cards. And so China says, yeah, we'll, we'll let you have another, I don't know, pick a number, $10 trillion or something to buy you some time. Yeah, the, the theory on the miners, what happens is if the price of gold goes up uh, really fast, um, they are not going to be able to spend all the money uh, that they're going to be paid for the precious metals. And so they're going to pay it out in the form of dividends. They're not going to be able to um, not, um, they're not going to be able to like build more mines. I mean, it takes years to get a new mine in. So uh, they're just going to have insane profits and they're either going to you know, buy back stock or they're going to, you know, pay out in dividends. And that's kind of what happened in the 1930s. They paid insane dividends. Yeah, so uh, look, the cryptos, I look at it as a kind of a cool technology and it's going to put a bunch of CPAs out of business, but is it a currency? It's a, uh, it's definitely not a tangible asset. It's uh, it's got some characteristics of currency, but we're going to see countries essentially ban its use. And so if all of a sudden it's kind of like, well, think about this. We were just talking about these other countries that only let you pull out a thousand dollars a month. So what happens if you've got this crypto and you can't use it because all the countries say, okay, we got our own thing now, like FedCoin or whatever else. I don't know. Um, and they're going to force, 
you know, what they want you to use. So that's, that's what I, the concern that I have. Yeah, the uh, U.S. dollar is still the uh, the less dirty currency. That's all. There, and it's just because we got the U.S. military out there. I did watch, uh, uh, or maybe it was an article I read. They said that the U.S. really can't uh, protect Taiwan anymore. China would uh, just completely destroy in a very short amount of time, anything defense that we would have for Taiwan. So Taiwan's essentially lost now with the improvements that China has in their military strategies and everything else. So there's a, there's a shift going on right now that uh, we're going to have to focus more inward in our areas and that uh, belt and silk and belt road or whatever it's called, um, it's China's going to develop their side of the world and we'll have to develop our side of the world and do something similar. So all of the uh, gaming that I've seen about the currencies is uh, we would see like the euro fail. The, the dollar would be like the last thing to fail, but who knows? That's that's the war gaming stuff that they've done. And um, but it's gonna it's gonna be like dominoes. When these things start falling, it's gonna happen pretty damn fast and we're not gonna be able to uh, adjust if you're not ahead of the game. So, you know, this is you gotta be you got I told you before, you gotta get your lines in the water. I haven't said that in a long time. You gotta get your lines in the water. Because by the time this happens, it's kind of like uh, I've been out fishing before. I'm telling you, it's amazing when all of a sudden there's like a feeding frenzy. I'll actually see the fish coming across the flats. The flats in Florida are a shallow part that uh, I have a shallow draft boat and I'd sit up on the flat where all the trout, redfish, snook, everything were. And you would see this bow wave coming. It looked like a submarine. I kid you not. But it would be like a whole bunch of redfish coming in on the flat all at once, and they'd just settle down. But it was like you kind of had to have the lines in the water because if you tried to throw out on top of them, you'd spook them all. So that's going to be kind of what happens here. You're, you're not going to be able to adjust fast enough. You're not going to be able to get your medals. You're not going to be able to get whatever by the time this happens. This is going to be like a tsunami coming in, and it's – it's going to be just scary as hell for the majority of the folks. So uh, have I received a COVID shot? I, I am not planning on getting a COVID shot. Now, who knows? Um, I think it's interesting the way you worded that COVID shot because so many people call it a vaccine, but we do not have any vaccines. These are some experimental things that don't meet the definition of a vaccine. So anyways, I don't, uh, I don't have it on the list to try to do that, but they're talking about COVID passports and everything else. So we'll have to see uh, what happens. Maybe I can pay, uh, slip somebody some money to uh, uh, give me the, uh, saltwater injection and uh, call it a day, Get, stamp my passport or something. Yeah, I think it is fine. funny about uh, Biden. They won't let him take any questions at all. We are at 44 minutes. We got 70 people on right now. That's fantastic. And uh, 33 thumbs up. I've been talking a long time and I didn't even bring any water over here. So what are your thoughts about uh, if people have an IRA gold, um, or I should say a gold, silver, platinum IRA or whatever, should they be pulling it out and you know putting it in a safe at home? Should they be you know, burying it in the backyard so they have it on hand or, or should they, uh, 
you know, take the tax hit now. I mean, I was thinking about, remember the Roth IRAs when I came out? To me, that was actually kind of genius. You, you pay your uh, taxes now because let's say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up a number. You know, let's say you've been investing your whole life and uh, you built up your IRA to like $7 million. You got to pay, when you start taking it out, you got to pay taxes on $7 million. And we already know the precious metals could go up 15, 20 times in value. And so you're going to have to pay the taxes on that to take it out versus if you went ahead and paid the taxes for the gains that we had already. And, um, and then you would, uh, if it did go up 10 or 15 times, you've, you don't have any taxes to pay except for capital gains, which is at a much lower rate. Oh, the witness, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was just saying that uh, there might be a way to, if we did have this COVID passport, you know, where if you wanted to travel across the country on a plane or whatever, you know, there might be a way that you could uh, like, and I'm not suggesting people do this, but uh, it might be something you say, hey, uh, tell you what, I'll give you a, a gold coin if you give me the saline shot and stamp my passport or whatever and say that I've, I've had this, uh, uh, you know, COVID shot. So I don't, I don't know that anybody's doing that, but I mean, we got fake driver's license. We got all kinds of fake stuff. There might be something we could do to get around it. And so ODMMC says he has a checkbook IRA. Do you trust others to hold your wealth? Yeah, well, that's kind of what I said, though. You have this, uh, um, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, right? That's the saying that you hear a lot of people say. So it's, I brought up the example of this, uh, uh, it's not a depository, but it's a secure vault facility in Atlanta, and they were closed for months, and you could not get whatever the hell you had stored there. Could have been anything. Could have been, say you had uh, some house titles that you had stored in this facility, and you wanted to sell them. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that could have been there, important stuff, and you couldn't get it. They didn't. They don't have access to your safe. It's just for you, but the facility was closed because they didn't understand what was happening. So all this stuff is uh, kind of interesting to me. So let's see, I'm trying to catch some of these comments. I think we had some new folks show up here. Let's see, MK Ultra is here, my tinfoil hat, uh, Michelle Simcoe. Yeah, what do you think a bribe for COVID would be? I don't know. I'll tell you what, if inflation jumps through the roof, it could be just, uh, you know, a bunch of eggs or something. The witness is here. Jeff Flattery. Elwood Blues. Yeah, the... Uh, I, I, I've seen a lot of videos where people are saying that it really looks like uh, we're getting into Never Never Land. In fact, I was reading an article where they were uh, trying to remember what company it was. People were calling the headquarters and saying, hey, are there any cheap stocks to buy? Because they had money they wanted to deploy, but they felt like everything was overvalued and they didn't want to actually put any more money. So when that happens... That means the stock market doesn't go up anymore. Um, so people might see that uh, something's teetering and might move out, and that might cause a, a little bit of movement downward. I don't know. Josh says he'd take the tax hit now. We got a lot of people saying they have control now. They've had control for decades. We live in illusion. Now they have control of the doggone voting. So we're screwed with that right now. DW's got to go. Rob Bustler. 
formerly Rob B. Safa Stackers from Perth. I keep forgetting that Georgia went and they changed their laws about uh, the election, but I do not think they fixed everything, but I think they tamped it down fairly good where they limited some of the damage, but they don't have on demand any more uh, voting um, by mail. Um, so I think, I think this is going to help, but it's, they've limited what you can do by mail now. We'll see. Taxes will always go up. Uh, so, by the way, I did get an air conditioner in, and it was 3600 bucks for a three-ton Goodman with like a 10 kW heat strip. And that's actually a beautiful unit. I'll take a picture so that you guys can see it, but I was uh, very pleased with that. And I realize now that I still have two fairly old ones. And I'm going to tell you, I have been working really hard over the last uh, six, seven years of trying to get all of my roofs done, get all these ACs, appliances, because of the, um, the inflation that I see coming. And you guys know the stuff that I did for like all my animal areas, for my gardens, everything, because I was trying to get it before this stuff all blew up. The only other times I've ever seen lumber go up this much was like when Hurricane Andrew went through and even Katrina, when they had to go like rebuild whole cities. That's not what's happening right now. This is just this low interest rate stuff has got building on steroids and people getting out of the cities. They're actually building other homes and they can't necessarily sell what they had in the other places, but they're just building more stuff to get out of wherever they were. Yeah, I saw the HR one. They're they're trying to do some stuff. I don't know that. I think a lot of people don't realize. Remember, Trump put in some astronomical number. I'm going to say close to 200 federal judges. So anything that they try to do that's remotely unconstitutional is going to get held up in the courts. And so I don't think they're going to be able to do some of the stuff that you think they're going to. Yeah, it'd be interesting if there was uh, something you could do, like uh, maybe these vaccines just let you hold the vial for a while to, you know, overheat it and destroy its effectiveness. There might be things like that you can do. Albert J is leaving the house. We're almost shutting down, Albert, too. We're at 53 minutes. So I usually try to keep it about an hour. I did look at that Deagle stuff. It's been a long time. Ooh, I'm getting hot. I might have to turn the AC on tonight. It's really humid here in Georgia right now. It's been warm. Oh, I got to tell you, those of you hanging around, I've been working on my boat. I actually got out there, got the batteries all charged up, and I was... Uh, pumped out a bunch of old gas and I'm using it in like the lawnmowers and stuff and uh, put, I didn't get it all filled up yet, but I put some uh, fresh gas in and ran the motor and it actually just started right up and ran like a top. So I got to do the maintenance on the motor and I've got a few things like the fuel gauge still is not working. So I'm going to uh, uh, go through that. I did put a new uh, sending unit in, but I think I've got a bad wire now is what that's telling me. Um, so I got to wire directly to the gauge and see if I can get this thing working. I got a few, uh, bilge pumps and stuff I got to get working, but, uh, probably the lights aren't working on the boat, you know, for being out at night. So there's a, a few things, but I, I'm making headway. I ordered some new lettering for the boat because, you know, I moved from Florida to Georgia. So I got to replace all that. And even my uh, boat name is, uh, I'm replacing all the lettering for that as well. Two to four feet of snow.
Yeah, right now with the dollar falling, we are we're just going to get slammed in our standard of living. So I'm going to tell you right now, this the standard of living it is absolutely happening right now. Uh, rents, I'm going to tell you, since uh, probably 2016, rents have gone up substantially. I think I have a thing in my lease thing where it goes up 7% per year. So if you think about over five years, how much that is, that's a pretty substantial increase. So, and then, you know, if a tenant leaves, you can obviously jump higher faster than that. But uh, um, I looked at apartments, really small apartments around here, and the apartments are sky high costs. So I've got houses, a lot of my houses are actually significantly under rent what they should be. But uh, anyways, I like to just get good tenants. So I do very good screening and uh, hopefully uh, this, I've got a tenant moving out at the end of the this month and they've been there four years. So that's going to be, I hate losing tenants I've had for a long time. How long can you store gas for? Well, I tell you, it depends on the storage conditions. Uh, Gas is not something that stores very well, and that's why I recommend propane. If you, if you really want something for like a generator or whatever else, propane's the way to go. But I was surprised the gasoline that was in the boat that's probably four years old was actually still in pretty doggone good shape. It'll be fine for lawnmowers and stuff, but I wanted my engine to I – I had a 50-gallon tank, 49 gallons, something like that. So I took roughly 30 gallons out and I, I'm putting, uh, you know, 30 fresh gallons back in. And so that I have 20 gallons of older stuff that should mix and burn well. The motor ran like a top. So I think the, the gas is in pretty good shape. But it, it's been a nice sealed container and it's uh, been in a fairly shady area. You know, the so we'll, we'll see. Do I have a contingency plan for a bad drought? I am actually planning on putting a well in this year. So that's my contingency plan. Um, I've got stored water for, you know, a cistern in my basement and I've got stored water uh, off of rain gutters and stuff. But uh, where I live, we actually get our weather from the Gulf of Mexico. So it's a, um, it's a subtropical region and we get substantial rain here. It's one of the reasons why I picked this. Susan, I have a biofuel generator, so it will run off of, uh, you know, gasoline or propane. And so that's why I try to keep my boat gassed up and my truck never below a quarter of a tank, because if I have to, I can siphon out of my fuel tank and get, um, be able to you know run my generator if I have to but I also have solar I'm going to do a video maybe next week's topic I'm going to talk about the real reason why I look like a greenie you know with what I'm doing but it's it's more the fact that I do not trust I don't trust the utilities I don't trust the government managing all this stuff and so I've tried to duplicate as much of the energy resources as I could even if it costs a pretty penny, because I believe that we are going to be seeing like third world type situations more often, like what we just saw with Texas. So I've not been affected folks. Um, I need to improve the batteries that I got. And so that's on the list too, but you just got to get started. You know, I've been, you know, every year I got a major project that I'm trying to knock out. And, uh, and it's because it looks like all hell's about ready to break loose. Well, I'm right now at an hour. So uh, if we can get a few more thumbs up before I shut her down, I want everybody to, uh, hopefully you guys are all being treated well. I hope, I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. <laughs>